Today's movie is a cult classic sci-fi horror that proves that the budget doesn't limit the possibilities. It's full of metal, blood, and neon colors, and has some beautiful and impressive shots. The movie takes place in a futuristic dystopian USA. The world is ravaged by radiation, pollution, and overpopulation. USA's government is some type of extreme version of eco-fascism. They wage fake wars in order to lower the population and impose laws against having kids. It begins with a nomad scavenger as he treks through an irradiated wasteland looking for scrap to sell. Soon he finds a pile of junk, and there he discovers an android buried deep in the sand. However, he doesn't notice that the android's hand is twitching. The scavenger then digs everything out, collects the pieces, and quickly flees as he notices a sandstorm approaching. Then we meet our main protagonist Mo, a soldier who took part in some shady government operations without knowing. He fought against fake enemies thinking that they were a real threat, but instead, he was just tricked by the government. He, and his best friend, Shades, visit a local dealer, Alvi, to make some cash by selling some electronic parts they found. Friends arrive at Alvi's shop to sell their goods, and after a short haggle, Alvi goes to a bathroom. At that exact moment, the mysterious scavenger from earlier shows up with android parts looking to make a few bucks. Mo uses that chance and buys parts for a low price. The scavenger then leaves, and Alvi returns without knowing about the visitor. Mo then resells all the android parts to Alvi for a ten times higher price. However, he keeps an old android's head because he wants to give it to his girlfriend as a Christmas gift. Then we cut to Mo's girlfriend, Jill, a sculptor who uses metal, electronic, and robotic parts to create some really weird but cool art pieces. She wakes up and immediately starts working on her new piece of art. She is passionate about it, but the problem is that she doesn't want to make art that sells, so she barely earns money. She takes a break to smoke a joint, and we learn that marijuana is legal, and is distributed in packs. Radio plays in her background, emitting broadcasts about the new sterilization law. Mo and Shades take a taxi and go downtown to visit Jill, and as they travel, we get to see the terrible state of New York City. It's dirty, demolished, and full of desperate people without a home. As they go into Jill's apartment building, they see a child tied to its sleeping mother. Two friends arrive at Jill's apartment door, and Shades critiques Mo for always leaving after spending a night with Jill and then advises him to be better towards her. Jill opens the door, and Mo shows her what he brought with him. Jill hugs Mo tightly. Shades see where it is going, so he goes back to his apartment to meditate. Things between Mo and Jill then become steamy, and not because they are in the shower, but because they didn't see each other for a while. As they are doing the thing, we can see that they are being unknowingly watched by Jill's foul-mouthed, perverted, voyeuristic neighbor Lincoln Weinberg via telescope. He is obsessed with Jill, and while watching the act, he takes a bunch of pictures for his obscure collection. He is so sick that he has a collection of her shoes. After those exhausting activities, Mo falls asleep, unlike Jill, who gets up to work on her newest creation. The loud noises wake Mo, and he goes to Jill, where he sees that Jill placed the android's head into her sculpture. Mo tells her that he likes the work, but does not understand what it represents. Frustrated, Jill says it represents nothing and resents Mo's suggestion that she make more commercial art to sell. The couple then begins to argue about a government sterilization law's plan and the morality of having children. Then we cut to Alvi, who researches the origin of the android parts and finds out some dark things about it. It is an earlier prototype, a one-of-a-kind killing machine, made to destroy everything in its path. Alvi then calls Mo, and urges him to return to the shop, as he has important news about the android, which he says is a MARK-13. Mo checks his Bible, where he finds the phrase, No flesh shall be spared under Mark 13 verse 20, and he becomes suspicious that the robot is part of a government plot for human genocide to address the planet's severe overpopulation crisis. Mo then heads to meet with Alvi, who is still researching the information about MARK-13. At the same time, Alvi is learning more and more about the model, 
which is a pure deadly machine with many weapons that can bring pain and kill in a hundred ways. Suddenly, the android's arm starts moving around, but Alvi doesn't notice it at all, as his attention is occupied by secrets of the government. Jill gets out of her bed to smoke one, and Lincoln uses that chance to take more photos of her naked body. Jill then goes back to sleep, and then the android's head charges itself by draining her apartment's power network. Then it takes control of the sculpture, and it starts rebuilding itself. The android's hand at Alvi's place is technically its original part, so the android can control it remotely. Mo arrives at Alvi's place and finds him dead of a cytotoxin and evidence that the robot is an experimental combat model capable of self-repair, Alvi's notes also indicate a defect, a weakness to humidity. Mo figures out that Jill is in grave danger so he calls her but she doesn't answer. Then he calls Shades who luckily picks up the phone. Mo tells him to go and check on Jill. Shades gets up, but earlier he spiced his meditation with some drugs, and that causes him to lose consciousness. The TV wakes Jill up, and the fully reconstructed android attacks her, but she manages to dodge the attack at the last second. She quickly leaves the room, while the android hides and patiently waits under the veil of darkness to play a game of cat and mouse. Lincoln sees the robot close the blinds while trying to peep at Jill. He decides to visit her and manages to open the apartment door. He immediately starts being creepy towards Jill, who tries to threaten him with Mo and says that he is in the army. However, Lincoln doesn't care about that because he is at last alone with her. Lincoln offers to override the emergency lock that traps them in her apartment, explaining that he set up the security for the building. After another series of sexually inappropriate comments toward Jill, Lincoln manages to override the emergency lock. Then, he notices that the blind on the window is closed, so he goes to open them so he can more easily peep at Jill. However, as he opens the blinds, the android attacks him, bringing some justice and eradicating the pervert. As Jill sees that, she immediately heads towards the exit, but the android drains the power once again. At the same time, two security guards play chess, without a care in the world, and without knowing that the bloodthirsty android is in the building. Jill then remembers that the android probably has infrared vision so she hides in a fridge, and luckily she is right. The android doesn't manage to see her in the fridge, but he still keeps looking, like he can sense her somehow. Suddenly, Shades contacts her, and that steals the android's attention, buying enough time for Jill to attack it. She wounds him, turns on her gas stove, and throws a match, causing a huge fire. Jill then takes a short walk through her apartment to look at all the damage that the android made. She gets a notification that someone wants to enter her apartment and assumes that it's Shades. Jill opens the door and sees Mo, Shades, and the apartment security team armed. Then we see that the android is behind her. Jill gets down, and the boys start blasting hard so hard that bullets push the android out of the window. Mo goes to comfort Jill, but she is mad at him because he left her like he usually does. She joins Shades, who is by the way still under the influence of drugs, and together they take a break to enjoy the city's view. Mo shows up, apologizes to Jill, and assures her that he will never leave her again as he did. The couple embraces each other, but at that moment, the android pulls Jill out of the window, and she grabs onto an electric wire. Mo blasts the android away and then instructs Jill what to do because he can't grab her due to electricity. As Jill decides to jump, the android cuts the wire, and she falls into a neighbor's apartment. The android injects Mo with a toxin, and Mo begins to hallucinate really badly. Mo experiences euphoria and a series of hallucinations as he cuts himself to try and suck the venom out, but he dies. Jill wakes up and immediately heads to her apartment to help Mo without knowing that he is dead, while Shades and two security guards follow her. The android hacks the apartment door, which traps one security guard, and as they split him in half, he fires his gun and kills the other security guard. Jill finds Mo's dead body. Her mourning is then interrupted by the android. Jill then hacks into the android CPU and attempts to communicate with it, but the android isn't a communicative type, so she fails, but at least she manages to learn that the humidity is his weakness. 
Jill then lures him to the shower, intending to release the water. However, the android is the deadly harbinger of pain and death, so he makes things harder for Jill, as it attacks her brutally. Shades manages to get past the malfunctioning door like a boss and then takes the gun from the dead security guard. Then, he quickly goes to the bathroom to help Jill. Shades shoots the android, and Jill releases the water and gets away. The android short circuits and Jill lets all of her rages out, as she smashes it to pieces. The next morning, a radio broadcast announces that the MARK-13 has been approved by the government and will be mass-manufactured. This absolute cult classic ends, as it begins, with the nomad scavenger roaming through the wasteland. That is it for today's recap. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the like button and check out the other videos from our channel.